Hello and welcome to a new program, as yet untitled, devoted to philosophy in our community. With me today for the first time in our studio is the Executive Director of Merlin CCC, Marisa diaz Wayne. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you and we're going to look forward to future engagements here in the studio with lots of people, lots of ideas. But mm -hmm. let's get to know you a little bit. You know, right. what is it that you do? What, what, what is this all about, Merlin, Merlin. CCC? <laughs> um, well, uh, I, I think in a nutshell, what we, what we do is we're, we're very dedicated to enriching lives and strengthening the community and environment through philosophy, uh, which is probably still fairly nebulous, uh, so I'll try to explain that a bit more. Yeah, I haven't heard that phrase before. Yeah, um, so let's see, I guess my background, what I've, um, how I've come to love philosophy and I guess apply it in what we're doing is, it's very much a way of life. It's not something that's meant to be, I think, sh shut away in a book. It's really meant to be lived. So what this organization does is really try to provide um, unique, fun, and accessible opportunities, a very broad spectrum on as well for people of all ages, all backgrounds, so from children to elders, um, that really tries to facilitate opportunities to engage in this sort of critical thinking and the exchange of ideas and, and having fun with philosophy. Yeah. So. Well, as you kind of alluded, most of us who grew up averting <laughs> philosophy <laughs> books, you know, some of them are great, but most of them are ponderous, and this is a, kind of a, a new twist on making the practice of philosophy, the living of philosophy, a more public, community-oriented uh, endeavor. So uh, you're a 501c3, you're a nonprofit, we are. and one, you want to just describe in more, in more detail some of the specific activities that you are up to yes. and engaging a lot of people in. Um, yeah, so about 95% of what we do uh, would fall under the umbrella of kind of philosophy in the community. And some examples of the programs and activities that we offer would be things like philosophy walks. That was actually the very first um, program or activity that we offered when we opened our doors about two years ago or so. Uh, we also do monthly think and drinks, always a fave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, philosophy symposiums and roundtables, uh, philosophy drive-ins and read-ins, and um, philosophy retreats as well. So those would be some examples. Uh, we also um, offer ph philosophical consulting, and that primarily takes the form of life enrichment and wellness programs, and some business programs as well, and also some academic research and writing. Yeah. So, so I know you, you have a website, and we'll <laughs> put it up on the screen here shortly. It's a very rich place to visit. There's all kinds of things there to look at, to read, to download, to review. I want to compliment you that Thank for you. that. <laughs> and I want to, you know, encourage people to go look at it because your world of philosophy is is very broad and wide ranging. And uh, people need to see what you're up to and then get engaged if they if they care to. You mentioned think and drink, you know, it's <laughs> it's an interesting concept. Yeah. This is water today, yes. but, you know. The nectar of the gods. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you also mentioned, like, drive-in, philosophy drive-ins. What, 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 what's that? Oh, my gosh, these are so fun. So um, we um, have the luxury of um, holding our drive-ins in Reader's Alley in the Interpretive and Convention Center, so the old uh, Stonehouse restaurant. And so uh, we'll convert the interior to look like a, a drive-in movie theater. So it's kind of an eve under the stars without the cars, right? So we'll have a large projection screen, camping chairs set up, we'll show a movie, and then afterwards we'll engage in lively philosophical dialogue for, from questions that, are, um, that really uh, come from those films and also from the people that are, that are there. Um, so this, I wouldn't presume this is going to be a film about Aristotle or Plato or, you know, the <laughs> Stoics or, or I tell me I'm the wrong. Stoics. No, though, they're great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the way that, we, I'm not opposed to that. We haven't done that yet. But um, I, the way I see philosophy is philosophy is very much the questions of life. I don't think we necessarily have to watch a film about a particular thinker um, to get into philosophical thinking. So I think it's really valuable to take things that, uh, experiences in our life, a movie that might not seem philosophical on the, sur on the surface, but when you really start digging in, is just rich with philosophical questions. So um, we actually have our next drive-in will be June 22nd, I believe, and one of our faves, it's Stand By Me. So this is an old film um, mm. written by... Um, 
slipping my mind at the moment. It was the body. Stephen Stephen King actually yeah. wrote it, um, but it is just an, it's a fun for fam, fun for all ages movie, but very very rich in um, in philosophical depth. So yeah. that's kind of what we'll get into afterward. So after the movie, lots of talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exchange, ex exchange of ideas and experiences in our life and how we might be able to think deeply and I mean philosophy should I think in many ways just as much as it is about giving birth to ideas and really helping us examine what it is that we're thinking and why and whether or not what we're thinking is justified and if so why or why not it should also I think also help I guess guide our behaviors ideally yeah. um, it isn't just again that thing that you put on a book put it away and then be done with it it is very much should be about what we're doing in this world and and uh, how we behave do you have a favorite philosopher or a couple of them. I, I am a sucker for Socrates. I just, I love, I love the Platonic dialogue. <laughs> Is that on dialogues. a T-shirt somewhere? I, if it's not, it should be. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. The Platonic dialogues have always been um, my one of my go-to um, kind of corpus of, of works. I just find it so delightful to read and um, continually uh, encourages new questions. Yeah. Well, on the philosophy walks, you know, when I first saw that as a title on your website, I thought, well, you know, I wonder if that's kind of a historically accurate that way back when, when these philosophers were roaming the earth, the, mm -hmm. the, one, the classical ones. The, in the peripatetics, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. peripatetic, exactly. So <laughs> were they actually walking around spreading this wisdom? Was that the normal method of conversing with fellow citizens and, and exploring these kinds of ideas? That was certainly one one method, absolutely, and for the peripatetics, that was one so of that's the primary. Actually, <laughs> that's actually a, a, a classification, peripatetic. It is, and then also peripatetic, as opposed to nomadic. Um, the terms peripatetic, you're walking with no home. Uh, I'm trying to think, but you still have a home. Nomadic is you're walking. I always get these confused. Sorry, but Ho yes, it is a real word. Homeless wanderers. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Crossing uh, boundaries. Yes, yes. Um, but mm -hmm. there was a, a school of thinkers, the peripatetics, that that walking was part of their their normal deal. And um, you know, I. So I had mentioned that philosophy walks were one of the first activities we offered as an organization. And I hold a very special place in my heart for philosophy walks. Um, one, because uh, really I, I was introduced to philosophy when I was, uh, I'd say, around eight or nine years old by my father. And he always had this really interesting sort of backdoor approach um, to, mm. to talking about philosophy. And primarily, um, it would happen when we were out hiking around. Um, so that logo um, for, for Merlin, um, you'll see a guy, a hiker with a walking stick. That's actually a silhouette of my dad. And so oh. this kind of idea <clears throat> of finding your way with philosophy, I think really is um, reflective in, in many ways of the philosophical journey, you know, looking deeply within and also kind of our, at our inner world and the outer world. Yeah. Um, now that you mention it, I mean, because yeah. <laughs> most of us are hikers who live around here. I mean, we, we walk a lot. We got lots of places to walk in this wonderful community and state. And now that you mentioned it, it's like, yeah, I think most of the, I would call deep conversations I would have with somebody are going to happen in that setting, not at home over the dinner table or mm -hmm. even in the bar. You know, it's sort yeah. of like a hike and, and thinking and talking, that all goes together. It does, and you know, actually, I, I think something, I've thought, thought about this a lot as to why that happens, because I do think it's a pretty common phenomenon, whether you're by yourself or with other people. And, and I think, and this is just my opinion on it, that there's something kind of magical that happens in being outdoors. And some of it is, uh, there really is, because there's a variety of walls that we work with in our lives. And when we're outdoors, one set certainly falls away, A, because you're outdoors, there's no mm -hmm. you know, walls. But also, and I think more importantly, um, like there's no CEOs on the trail. There's no, <laughs> you know, we just, we're all very vulnerable. And, and you sort of strip away all these layers and just get down to that, the vulnerability of humanity. We all cry, we all feel, we all laugh, we all think about things that are important to us. And so it just seems like a very naturally conducive, um, I guess, environment to really dig into those deeper questions. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> now, you, uh, you provided me with some talking points, and I'm going to look oh and boy. make sure <laughs> I'm not missing something <laughs> vital. Um, you've got a question about, well, I've got a question for yeah. you about things on the radar, things that are coming up. You've mentioned kind of a, your, your standard fare or the things that you're doing mm -hmm. on a routine basis. Is there something special 
on the horizon? There is indeed. Um, we have been um, very fortunate to be uh, uh, to be, become the new hosts of the Reader's Alley Block Party. Uh, that's taking place Thursday, June 7th, and that will be in, of course, historic Reader's Alley. Uh, and this year is going to be a bit different. Uh, that Anna Strange, who I want to give a shout out to because she is amazing. Uh, she has um, really been the lead force behind uh, the block party for the last three years, and her and I are working together this year. And what's really special about the block party this year, I think, is now this is actually going to be a fundraiser moving forward. So we had two fundraisers a year that we held, one of which was a block party as well. So now that we're combining forces, um, proceeds raised for this, will some will go to philosophy in the community and some will go to Reader's Alley, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, but so is Reader's Alley a, a, a 501, a nonprofit in and of itself? It is not. So how, how does that work for the fundraising? Um, basically any proceeds that can come in will, um, so we're, we're the host of the organization, donations that are made or sponsorships that are obtained um, will go through us. We will donate um, okay. yep, yeah. a portion back to Reader's yeah. Alley so that, you know, very variety of things can be um, accomplished there. Yeah. But we have all sorts of great things for this block party. So um, we're sort of taking the best of both worlds from the Brew Wine Chew, which was our um, fundraiser, and the block party from years past. Uh, so there'll be you know beer, wine, eats, uh, a youth dance act will be there, um, fire dancers, which is always fun, mm -hmm. ping pong, you can't have a party without <laughs> ping pong, um, live music, of course, and we're actually debuting a band um, called Big Ska Country, which is fantastic, yeah. so ska music. Yeah. Um, and uh, Governor Bullock is actually going to be doing a special event kickoff as well for us, which is quite yeah. exciting. Okay, is the rumor that I've heard true that <laughs> He, like you, it will appear in a toga and get to wear, you know, those laurel leaves. By the way, I want to thank you for bringing my crown. This is the first opportunity in my life to be wearing the laurel. Suits you well. Laurel. So. Yeah, it makes me feel smarter <laughs> and, you know, more thoughtful. <laughs> um, I, I would love Are it. Are you going to egg him on? Should I we all would egg him on? Yes. yes. I would love it if he would wear a toga and a laurel head wreath. <laughs> it would be amazing. <laughs> there will be some toga-clad individuals that will be on site. So <laughs> Good, good. Well, I'm going to back up a little bit because to your website, there's some things on it. You know, you've talked a lot about what philosophy means to you and how you're intending to make it a more public experience uh, day to day. And at the block party, you're celebrating, I'm going to read this. Yeah. I, th I, I highlighted this because it <laughs> hit me. What you're celebrating is critical, creative thinking, reflection, and civil discourse, which are essential to the health and longevity of a community. And philosophy is an important aspect of this. And then you go on to describe the fun of it all. <laughs> so I'm kind of reiterating what's surprising to me is that you're managing to make a heady object oh. or subject in our experience, a much more externalized one, and lots and lots of fun. <laughs> I think uh, you must be on to something. <laughs> you, you've mentioned the need for fundraising, and of course, you know, us old school people are thinking out, out loud right now, like, hmm, it must be a little bit challenging to raise funds for philosophy and the, the direct services that you provide yeah. through it. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? You know, I'm not asking you to make a pitch for <laughs> funding, but it might help people to understand how they can think about supporting Merlin CCC. Um, yeah, so it, it is a challenge, and in part because, you know, it's very easy to take on causes where it's a, there's a direct link. Um, and philosophy is a little bit more broad. There are direct links. You know, thinking deeply um, has some very tangible effects um, in our in our life. We can live healthier lives. We can make better decisions. But being able to discuss how precisely that happens is difficult because those are going to be different for each person. Um, I, I kind of going back to that idea about philosophy. It's not, so philosophy is not about telling people what to believe. It really is this sort of midwife process of helping helping facilitate reflection um, about oneself and the world, a world around us, but being able to translate in a way for a funder or someone who wants to support it that they can say, I need to know very quickly how this is going to make a difference in my life. Yeah. It's a bit harder. Um, 
So, and I'm not sure if actually that was one of the driving factors behind the tagline, finding your way with philosophy, because it is much more of an invitation for a discussion as opposed to this is what is happening, you know? Yeah. You know, we, we're always trying to raise money for projects with grants and things. And, you know, foundations, to their credit, are always keenly interested in how you're going to evaluate <laughs> your impact. You know, how are you going to measure success? Yeah. And I thought of that when, I, when, when this came up, like, well, this... How do you measure, you know, philosophical success, you know? <laughs> but, you know, people's lives are improved. I'm, I'm presuming that's, that's one of the more general outcomes. Yeah. You engage in thoughtful reflection in, with, in community and good things come of it. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly, I think, quantitative ways to measure success. Um, there are a number of statistics that will absolutely show if you have training in, in philosophy from you know younger years on, you'll score better in a variety of sort of testing modalities. Um, having critical creating creative thinking skills can take you a long way in sort of the academic arena. But in terms of the life arena, which is so much of our focus, and it's not removed from the academic arena by any means, um, it's harder to, to provide those quantitative measures. Um, there's the qualitative measures, I think, is so much what, of what we're about. Yeah. Um, so, you know, asking people, what was your experience like, and how has your life been enriched? Has it, and what sort of decisions have you made differently? Um, what has this helped you um, to think about? Uh, have you changed your mind on certain things? And if, if so, why? Um, those take time to measure. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, at least right now, we, we have started uh, doing testimonials and, and really trying to make sure that the programs we're offering are both what the community wants and also something that's um, going to benefit them. So we've started kind of implementing um, questions like these, but it's a, it's a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> Another feature of your website, which is fun, is the testimonials. Mm -hmm. You get to see what people say about their experience thus far. Cool. We only have a few minutes left. And before we started talking here on the set, we, we were talking about what we might see next time you come yeah. visit our studio. And you made mention of some young young people. Do you want to just give us a little teaser on that I, note? I can certainly do that. So um, f kids are natural philosophers. They're so beautiful. Um, and the questions that kids ask, the whys, the how comes, the, um, those are questions that often as we get, we get older, we stop asking, unfortunately. And so being able to encourage that curiosity uh, and tap into this wealth of knowledge that exists in our kids is something that we're really interested in. So we're thinking about doing perhaps a program where um, we feature kids in the Helena community that have ideas of theirs that they want to share. Um, we haven't come up with a, an I, exact title, maybe yeah. Big Ideas by Little Philosophers or something, but, um, but really encouraging that, that exchange, that dialogue, and really having fun with thinking, because it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I think kids are, are likely to grab the idea of wearing a toga oh, yes. right off the bat, no, no struggle, and the little crowns that go Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so Marisa, thanks again for coming here today and telling us all about Merlin CCC. I'll remind the audience that the big block party at Reader's Alley is June 7th, Thursday, starts at 5. 5 to 9.30. 5 to 9.30, lots of fun. Meet, you'll meet and talk with a lot of interesting people, I'm sure, including the governor. Look for him. <laughs> and it's free and dog-friendly this year as well. So Can't beat that. Right. <laughs> so we'll see you again next time.